Good morning. In 1954, Senator Joseph McCarthy was the chief counsel during the Army McCarthy hearings in the U.S. Senate and was investigating in Hollywood and New York City theaters for suspecting communists who were directors, actors, actresses, and even playwrights. And if so they were, then they would be kicked out of their careers. Marvin Porter happened to be an uprising new playwright in Brooklyn. And unfortunately, he was one of those so-called communists. And Senator Joseph McCarthy and lawyer Roy Cohn kicked him out of his playwright career. Later on in his life, Roy Cohn happened to be Donald Trump's lawyer in the early 1980s. And Roy taught all of his tricks over to Trump. And Marvin Porter in 1963, he was in a small apartment, all alone and having only one brother and he hadn't spoken to his mother ever since Roy Cohn and Senator McCarthy kicked him out of being a playwright and ruined his life. Act two, scene three. It's November 23rd and the lights rise on the food, glasses and wine bottles. The bedroom door opens with Marvin walking into the room wearing a bathrobe, and he studies the card table and begins taking the wine bottles to the kitchen. As he comes back to clear off the rest of the items, Sammy steps out of the bedroom wearing her wrinkled dress, ruffled hair, and bare feet. Good morning. Marvin stops and with a smile looks at her. Good morning. What time is it? We shouldn't have drunk all that wine. I have a rehearsal at 11.30 this morning. Let me help you. I can do it. Together we cut the time in half. Did you sleep well? Yes, after you fell asleep. I read your play and got drowsy, only seeing your first scene. It's no wonder you got bored. No, it's, it's, it's very good. And I caught my imagination from the start. Can I take it with me? I want to finish reading it. You might. You might as well keep it. No one will ever stage it. Don't punish yourself like that, Marvin. It's really good. And do you want to know something? Last night, you weren't bad at all. It's sweet of you to say after my being a rusty faucet for many years. Don't say that. <laughs> it's true. It's not true because it's not fair of you to criticize what I enjoyed. <laughs> Did you remember seeing Baxter and George leaving last night? After they stumbled into the bedroom, they told me you were going to get drunk. <laughs> the front door opens and Baxter entering and seeing them. Hello! Good morning. I just got back in time to cook a fabulous breakfast for the three of us. I can't. Marvin, I need to freshen up for my rehearsal, and I'll see you later in the day. Sammy goes into the bedroom. Where have you been? You never will believe it. Try me. Well, we first went to Ronnie's bar, but it was a little too tame for our taste. And then George flacked down a taxi, and it took us to Tony Bonner's Super Club. <laughs> we shouldn't have drunk that much, and his head fell down onto my shoulder. Before we knew it, there was a badge in our faces, and we were arrested and taken to jail. We were accused of homosexual lewd behavior. <laughs> But George talked to the judge, and we were allowed to go out free. What a fun night it was. <laughs>
Sammy comes out of the bedroom, holding Marvin's play script in her hand. Okay, I'm off. Enjoy your breakfast. And Marvin, I would like to take you to a new restaurant in the village tonight. It will be fun. Wish me well, because we're running the first act today. Bye. Sammy kisses Marvin on his cheek, and she exits. Aren't you the happy man these days? I plead the fifth, and not a single word. Don't ruin my fun. What took place last night? Don't be a pervert. <laughs> That's me. But I was right, wasn't I? She adores you. Hardly, I believe. I'm happy for you, Marvin. It has been a long time, hasn't it? Yes. Is that all you have to say? This is all new to me, and, and, and I don't know where it's leading me to. That's fair enough. I'll let you off the hook this time. What is it going to be? How about having three eggs, hashed potatoes, and two slices of sourdough bread? Do whatever you want, but I'm jumping into the shower now. Marvin moves to the bedroom door. Why are you in a rush to wash her lovely scent off you? Is that what I'm doing? Perhaps. But don't ever doubt her fondness for you. You think so? Yes. And I'm always right. At the very same time, they smile together and Baxter enters the kitchen and Marvin enters his bedroom and the light slowly dim to black. Three weeks have passed by, and it is now December. The sound of typing is heard as the light slowly rises up, showing Marvin typing away on his obituaries. Marvin stops typing. He stands up and rips the page from the typewriter carriage and tears it in half and then throws it into the garbage pail under the desk. He walks to the window looking out at the Brooklyn Bridge, and soon knocking is heard at his front door. When opening, he sees Sadie Bloomfield standing there, and she enters the room. How are you doing? I don't know. It's just another day, Sadie. George told me that your mother's house has been sold. Yes. He told me uh, just yesterday. Good. That should give you some financial security for a while. Are you still taking walks outside? Yes, but, but not as much as before. Have you heard from her? I received a letter last week from her and, and apparently she's in another production in London. It was a pity that her production folded and having her father passing away a short time later, or she may have stayed here with you. Do you miss her? Yes, I, I do. Is there any hope for you to get together again? I'm here and she's there and I really don't know, Sidney. How do you feel about George moving to Florida? Do you miss him? Yes. Especially on Thursdays, <laughs> when he used to bring me my groceries. He told me he always wanted to go fishing in warm waters and when he made his decision to stop being a cop, he looked ten years younger to me. He took care of Ethel all those years, and now he is free from that responsibility. What are you going to do now? I, I really can't say. Baxter told me he got a contract acting out in California in a television show. Yes, he told me he played the role of a museum crew writer that sold the paintings on the black market in the Perry Mason show. It wasn't Hamlet for him, but, but it was Hollywood where he wanted to be. 
Why I came here today, Marvin, was to tell you that I put my apartment building up for sale. I, I'm getting up in age, and there are places I want to see and do. Whoever buys this old place, I'll make sure your apartment is secured. I just want you to know that. I appreciate that, said he. You, you've been a good surrogate mother to me. It might take months or even only weeks before it's sold. If you choose to move elsewhere, let me know so I can help you relocate anywhere you go. <laughs> it's funny how life goes. Just when you think you're on the top of the world and then you soon find yourself at the bottom of a well. <laughs> We've all been there once, but we're fighters. Never give up. There's always a tomorrow, and don't ever forget that. Oh, and oh, and by the way, the, the plumber will be coming tomorrow morning to inspect all of the water pipes. Is that going to be a problem? No, no, not at all. What time? Uh, around 10 o'clock. That's not a problem. Um, would you like to take a walk with me this afternoon? I would love to. I always like walking with a handsome man. <laughs> what time? 12.30? 12.30 it is. I'll get dressed in my colorful jumpsuit just for you. See you then. Said he begins to open the front door, but stops, and turns around pulling an envelope from her jacket. Oh, 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 I almost forgot. The mailman gave me this letter for you yesterday. Who from? It was from Sammy. Said he hands it to Marvin. Open it up. I would like to hear what she has to say. Marvin opens up the envelope and takes the letter out, and he first studies its content, and then he begins to read the letter. Marvin, I have missed you so very much, and I can't describe how lonely it has been without you and our lovely walks through the park. My father's funeral went well, and my family came closer as ever before. I'm currently playing in the role of Sicily again in Oscar Wilde's The Importance of Being Earnest in London. Please let Baxter know that he will be with me when I'm standing on the stage. Your last letter informing me of what George is now doing, I'm so happy that he finally has found a new life. But what I'm writing mostly to you about is the terrific news that your beautiful play has just been received by the artistic committee to produce your play within their next season. They, they also agreed to finance your flight. They also agreed to finance your flight and rooming here in London so you can be engaged throughout the rehearsal of your play. I'm so proud of you. This will bring us together again, and most importantly, a new life for me. This will bring us together again, and most importantly, a new life for you and me, my love. Marvin stops reading and he is overwhelmed with emotion. City wraps her arms around him as they stand silently together as the lights slowly dim to black. The End <laughs>